Welcome back to Live with the Mod, the Poet, Powered by Revolution of One, where we have the greatest guests and most powerful conversations, and today is no different. Today, we got a special guest on the show with us today, very special guest, entrepreneur, marketing genius, branding specialist, Nikki Saunders. How are you doing today, family? I'm good. What's popping? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling blessed to have you on the show. I just want to say I'm 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 blessed and honored to have you on for a few moments just to share some gems and some knowledge with us. I was just saying I anybody I was telling that I had you on the show, they was excited to to hear this episode. They excited for this episode. Not every day when I'm telling people about an episode that I got upcoming, they're excited for this. And this is one that is is has a lot of anticipation. So I really appreciate you doing this. Oh no, no, it's it's my pleasure. You have the, the invite alone is like, come on, I'm here. I'm here for it. I appreciate it. And um so I wanted to 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 dive into this conversation. It's a very um very vast conversation. And I, I wanted to ask the a conversation that a lot of people talk when they talk about social media. Um I hear a lot of um, people who maybe predate social media or predate this type of marketing, um, they talk about what it looks like after it. Do right. you feel like social media will be around in the next 10 years? And if not, like, what will it look like? Because it's it, it might be some sort of social media, but what do you think social media will look like in the next 10 years? Do you think it'll look more virtual or will it still be kind of what it is now or a mixture of both? So we got to look at patterns, right? Social media mm. really hasn't changed too much. Mm. If you really think about it, like from the beginning when we were on MySpace pages and things like that to the evolution of Twitter, Facebook, mm. you know, Instagram, what they do, all they did was add videos, add mm. a certain piece of content, right? So I don't really see social media going anywhere. We we still we live in a nosy era, mm. right? So where we want to see what people are doing, we want to hear what other people are saying. We want kind of to be in their world before th there was no way to really get in the life of celebrities, so-called influencers. That's just mm. brand new. But there wasn't a way to really get in the mind, see their day to day action, see what's coming up, what's not. It it mm. was more of a guessing game or who do you know or you know, newspaper, radio. Now that's not the case. It's everything's on our phone. And as long as that need of being nosy, being in the know, FOMO is going to be there. Social media is not going to go anywhere and not really going to change besides what content format is popping? What mm. uh, are we more into audio today? Are we more into video? Are we going back into writing? Like those eras change, but mm. not necessarily the the need of social media. That's not. It's going to take some real crazy to mm. to change that up. That's so true, and it's crazy that you say that because um. I noticed when Instagram switched up like the normal post to the reels, it took me a minute to adjust to it because I was so used to the traditional, like, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the small form posting. And I was just like, I was going against it, but I noticed the views went from hundreds of thousands to like 20,000, 10,000. And somebody was just telling me like, you need to do reels. And I was fighting against it because I was so used to the old guard. But once I adjusted it, I hit another and it started going again. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I get it. Like, they'll punish you for being in an old mindset, like social media rewards, like that evolutionary mindset, which is, which is, is crazy to think about, but the algorithms definitely are based around somewhat uh, of that. I know something that you all uh, say a lot is that speed kills. Yeah. Um, can you go into that? Like into the, cause I, I remember, um, I think you were on the earn your leisure podcast and you was talking mm -hmm. about how, um, like, not being able to get content back to let's say a client in a timely fashion is is something equivalent to you somebody calling you on the phone and they need you right now and you can't get back to them and it, cr yeah. it creates a rift in the relationship mm -hmm. like talk about that concept speed kills so we we just need content period mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean the best high quality content but our presence to people is content, mm. right? It's not talking. We don't pick up 
phone call, like it's, it's not about that. It's not being at places. It's yo, what content did you put out to show that you thought about me, gave me mm-hmm. some type of value, you know, made me laugh, motivated me in some way, shape or form. That's our presence to people. So when I say speed kills is because the second we don't put out content in a timely manner, our people are going to look at other places. And so their attention is now on different brands, on mm-hmm. different influencers, on different products and services. If only we was to put it out on on the time that we said we were or even before. Right. So from a creator standpoint, we're talking about clients and things like that. It's important to if, if we're doing an event or if something happened that you showcase what happened right then and there. Because the audience wants to know the more that you give them, the more the connection is closer, right? For those core followers. Now there's going to be some people that don't necessarily care about the day in the life or what's happening right now, but they eventually will because we get from people who are curious about us to those people who are like, really want to rock with us heavy. Mm. And so the, the quicker that we put out content from whether we're behind the, the, the computer all day, yo, what are we doing? Let me show you this, that, and third to mm. if we're doing an event and not waiting for the recap video, right? We're showing different things from people coming into the event to speakers, to that whole nine, whether we're hosting the event or whether we're participating at the event, Right. We could show all these things super quick instead of waiting for a whole week or two weeks of, hey, this is what I did last week. No one cares. Mm -hmm. No one cares what Mm -hmm. you did last week. We care what you're doing right now. Maybe tomorrow, like maybe the next day. But if we're not putting it out on a timely and speedy manner, then people will miss our presence. People will miss the importance of what we're doing. And their attention will go somewhere else. Do you think what we do, what we did yesterday is more valuable in the future? Kind of like, um, uh, like documenting the process, like thinking about, um, that Kanye documentary that came out, yeah. uh, the genius documentary. Like, do you think sometimes it's important to document the process because it's like, it, it becomes more valuable later. Like it might not be that valuable now, but later when everything's built, like, I, I know when you tell your story about how you, you know, met ET and how you went about this process, like, I'm just thinking like that footage, that whole process driving here, driving there, like that would have been invaluable. I don't know if you, how much of it you documented, but I just think that whole, that whole concept is just invaluable. Oh, listen, document all you can. I wish I, I would have documented that. I, I wasn't thinking because mm. I had a whole time period of, I didn't necessarily want to be up front. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. I was so worried about building the talent and being behind the scenes that I didn't see the value of putting myself mm-hmm. out there until later. So I regret those those times. Right. Mm-hmm. But I do believe anybody, regardless if you are behind the scenes, regardless if you want to be the talent CEO, whatever your position is, there are people who want to see the journey. Mm. Right. And just because we document it now doesn't mean it has to go out right now, per mm. se. You have to put something out. But if you have a, a thought of, yo, know, this can build over time or I don't necessarily see the point of it right now, that's fine. Put it in a Dropbox, put it in a Google Drive, you know, put it on hard drives if you want to, you know, depend on physical situations, right, where you could hold it. But down the line, as we're doing things, because majority of us think our life is boring. And so that's why we don't document it. Right. But the painter who is now famous, people want to see those first couple of drawings and how you did it. Right. Mm. Because you, it's relatable now. Yo, I see myself in your day one and not your day 15 years. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. So we have to create 
those relatable pieces of content somehow, some way, whether it's in a documentary form, whether it's a content series that at a certain point you're doing four or five pieces of content that takes a look back at the journey. But the reason why we're creating relatable content, because once we reach a certain point, it almost seems we're not reachable anymore, anymore. Mm. Right. So they don't, they see where you are and you almost seem as goals instead of, Mm. yo, you can still talk to me. Mm. But this is why we create that, that relatable content of, yo, look at when I'm having a bad day. Look at for those people who work out where I don't feel like working out, where I had a bad meal for those entrepreneurs that are saying, yep, yo, I I I didn't profit today because you know why? Because there are people who are not putting that out. Mm. The the social media world that we live in now is more of a highlight reel. And so we appreciate the the ups and the downs. We appreciate the stagnant situations. We, we appreciate you just being you. So when we're documenting everything that is happening, we look at, we look back at it and be like, this is where I was day 15. This is where I was when I first signed this, this is where I was when I first got my first employee. This is where, and people are like, I'm right there. I'm, um, in because we don't know where everybody's at in life. Like mm-hmm. we don't know if they just started their business. They've been in five years in no profits, full profits. Don't know what to do with it. You know. So, I, yeah, I say document it. It becomes valuable when you make it valuable. Mm. Did was it ever um, a time where you felt? Um, unsure to get in front of the camera because you were uh, thinking like kind of thinking about the opinions of how others would, you know, feel about you presenting your information or something like that. Cause I remember I had the same, um, I had the same mindset towards the ancestral plane. Like I didn't want to be on it. Didn't want nobody to know I ran it. Honestly, just because my opinions and some of the things that I shared on it was kind of controversial. And I'm like, I don't want that heat coming back on me, you know, because I was way more radical uh, in the beginning than I am now. It's more motivation now, but it got to a certain point where I just understood the business side of it. I understood just like the growth side of it. And I was like, the brand is bigger than anything. Like right. my personal brand is going to be bigger than the ancestral plan could ever be. And that's when my mindset changed. But what was that moment for you that, that really got you to understand, like you had to get in front of it? The people were asking and mm. that's where I had to put that feeling of imposter syndrome mm. to the side. Right. Because, you know, when for, for me, I'm always thinking there is somebody better. I'm I'm because if I'm still learning, there's clearly things that mm. are above me. Right. But I also had to realize I'm forever going to be a student. So I'm never going to feel ready per se, according to my expectations, but I'm not mm. moving off of my expectations. I'm moving for who I'm serving. Right. Mm. And Though I feel at times, and a lot of people may feel this, where I don't feel like I'm at a level 10, right? But I have to remember whatever level I'm on, there's people that are level one, level two, level three, that need to learn from your level four, five, six, seven, whatever level that you're on. So I look at it more than I don't try to be the expert. I try to show people what I'm learning. I'm trying Mm. to show people what I've practiced. I'm trying to give out my different experiences and you guys come along the way with that. I have no desire to be like, I'm not that typical person that's saying, okay, I learned this. I flip it. I, turn it into a course. And then Mm -hmm. I'm trying to sell everybody and and deem myself as the expert. Nah, I give everything away for free for the most part because I'm learning, Mm. right? 
I've, I've done these steps about 10 times. Now I can teach it here. I tried this. What are we doing? So this is exactly what I'm doing with the AI world right now. There's so many things that's coming out every single week with AI. You think I'm an AI expert? Absolutely not. But mm -hmm. as I'm trying, let's do this. Let's do that. Right. I, I'll go on live. I'll try it out on live and then I'll repurpose that and use it as as content for people. Right. And understand that it's not about being the expert. It's about being present. It's about providing a resource that other people cannot, doesn't have the time to find. I, when I was figuring the, these things out, I always wished there was just one place that I can go and say, Hey, let me learn everything. Mm. If I want to learn everything about social media, let me go to one spot. Let me go. But I had to go all these different places. So I was like, you know what? Let me be that one. Right. Mm. Let me be that one. And so that was my whole goal and mission. And I had to get out of the way of myself, of thinking that I wasn't good enough or maybe people didn't like the New York swag that I give. Maybe some people don't like the blunt side of me or the silly side of me, or, you know, they'll find something wrong. I'm not mm. here for everybody. I'm here for a selective group and they rock with me and they rock with me heavy and I appreciate them. And I'm not focused on what other people are thinking because I'm not here for them. God put me on here for a specific group. And so I'm going to stay true to that specific group and get out of the way of my own feelings. Mm. I love that. And, and, and that's something that I had to learn as well. Um, I, I forgot who told me this, but he, he they were telling me, um, you're not really making traction until you start to get haters, you know, um, mm -hmm. because I was doing my podcast for a while and I was not getting any negative comments. Like I wasn't getting no thumbs down. I wasn't getting... And it was just like, you're building up an organic network, but everybody who's following you comes from the ancestry plan. Everybody's watching is already a supporter. Yeah. Wait till the haters come. Now your content is finding people who don't know nothing about you. Like that's a positive. And I had never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, so sometimes negativity is just a sign of success. It's just a sign that it's going out of your circle. It's going outside of your community and it's reaching more people. And that gives you potential for a bigger community. And I thought that was powerful. I want to ask you about, um, about networking and just, yeah. um, what do you think is, um, I say two, maybe three qualities that successful people want in somebody on their team or an assistant of sorts or somebody who coming in for an intern. Cause a lot of people reach out to me to, you know, assist me with what I do, or they want to help me with this and help me with that. And everybody wants to be up next to you when you're, when you already got a movement going, but what do you think? Because I love your story, by the way, um, because my story is very, very, very similar. Did a lot of work for free, work for a lot of brands for free, bid up a lot of platforms for free. Didn't mm -hmm. ask for nothing. That was always, but I, I want to hear your perspective. What do you think, is two or three qualities that um, successful people like and in, in, in people that they bring on to their team. So I think it's, and, and I'll, I'll uh, quote my guy E on this one. It's about that dog. It's, it has mm. nothing to do with uh, the skills that could be taught. You know, they, we, we're as, as businesses, we're supposed to have SOPs and everything like that. So that's the system right there. But if you don't have that dog, if you don't have principles, values, like core, core values that aligns with the brand, I'm not interested. Mm. I mean, like money's not hard to make, right? It's really loyalty is hard to find. Mm. Drive is hard to find, right? Enthusiasm is, is hard to find. Mm. Like heart is hard to find right a person who is going to actually spend time on your on your brand mm -hmm. and not just trying to catch the next next lick here and there and just gather all these clients and in all these different places the person who like sees 
uh, for for example, uh, deeper than the brand or Nikki and Moose or even my own personal brand. Like it's yo, I'm proud to be in this movement, right? That's hard to find. It's it's money. People who want money is not hard to. So if you have a good salary base. To find somebody to get the job or whatever to get the job done, mm. that's not going to be hard. But if you're trying to build a team that actually impacts the world, those are some of the things that you have to find. Mm. I love that. And, and and that's so true. Um, I noticed that what it was something I still I still have an issue with that. Like I don't I don't um I'm not open to hiring people to do my social media for my podcast or for my backup page or for my main page or from any other page that I created just because um, I just, it's a certain level of attention to detail that I have with, and, and I heard people, they've told me so many times because I would burn out running so many different things. Mm-hmm. And it was like, well, you might have to sacrifice the quality for your own mental health and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just like, I know the community in such an intimate way. Like, it gets to a space where it's not even about, like you said, it's not about money. It's literally about serving the community. Like it is not about followers growing. Like it gets to a certain space. Once you know, it's going to grow. Once you know, it's constantly growing. You don't think about it growing because it does it on its own. You, you know, you wakes up and it happens. Right. And it's just like, I, I really think about how to be intentional about the content that I put out and um, the only people that I allow to work um, on my platforms is my little brother. You know, and it's because he it's because he's the one he he's literally saw me build it from ground up. Yeah. And I taught him from ground up back when I was doing sports, you know, because I used to mm-hmm. run sports pages and um, I, I was teaching him right along with me. I started to get successful and I'm like, this is how you do this. And everything ties into one another because I use the editing that I learned in sports marketing to help the ancestral plan. I used a lot of different small techniques, you know, and, and what I was learning and reaching out to a lot of people was a lot of the people who run these bigger pages were like children, like 14, mm-hmm. 15, like kids, like, and they just had the intelligence. Like I remember I was talking to this one dude and uh, he was telling me, um, he probably was like 17 or something. And um, he was telling me when Bronny had just got on um, Instagram, um, he wasn't verified yet, LeBron's son. And he was like, man, all you need to do is like create a username with, with the name Bronny and you'll instantly right. get thousands of followers because nobody knows who's the original one. So then I started to learn the value of usernames and how to use yes. those to drive traffic. So if it's a new star that's just developed like Ice Spice and, and she just getting hot right now, then you would create a fan page for that and it would drive thousands of uh, followers instantly. So that's how I used to sell pages to platforms. I would just leverage whoever had the hot name at the moment. And I remember when LeBron had started the craze about Taco Tuesday, it was 20, 30 Taco Tuesday pages. Yeah. You create ones, you instantly get thousands of followers. Um, it's like whatever happened in the news, if you create a page around that, um, it would instantly just gain followers. And I, I would do that to build a follow. So I had multiple pages with 20, 30,000 followers just based off of doing that strategy. And I learned that from a, like a young dude. He was just telling me like, this is all you need to do. This is what you need to do. Cause I was reaching out so to people smart. like, how? I was reaching out to people like, how did you get this username? Like, how did you get this? You like, how did you get it so quick? I just learned LeBron and he was like, I do this. Like, this is what I do. And he gave me the game. Look, I'm like young kid. And he was just giving me the game. And I'm like, I understood like, I would have not thought of that. It was his own right. creative genius just to outthink me. Like I, I was like, though, this is like, this ain't in the rule books. Like this is just some creative genius. So I just felt like, um, I just felt like it, it, it's, it's so, it's so up to you and your own creative genius to figure out how to push it to that next level. Um, another powerful quote, um, that, that you said, uh, I believe it was on, uh, the circle of greatness podcast. You said, once you become a bill, you become replaceable. And yeah. um, that was a bar. I was like, I never heard anything. that pro- I was like, that that was powerful. Can you talk about that? You said, once you become a bill, you become replaceable. Yeah. Bills have no value. Mm. Right. So we think about it. Um, well, a one that we have to like consider, meaning uh, when I didn't need my cable no more. Right. Mm. Because there was so much value on YouTube. There was so much value on Netflix, Hulu. Like I had all these other things. Why 
am I spending on cable, right? Mm. It became a bill because I didn't see the value in it no more. Mm. And it was just a price tag at that point, right? When you are doing services in some way, shape or form, it's not about the actual service that you give them. It's about the value that that service gives, mm. right? And if you are just concentrating on the bare minimum of they paid, they uh, paid you for this and that is it. And so you do this mm. and that is it. The second that they find somebody else, competitor, whatever, that does exactly that, but more, mm -hmm. maybe giving them a little bit more attention, may communicate a little bit more, may uh, go above and beyond and give one more thing over what was contracted, you become a bill, right? You, it's not valuable anymore. You mm -hmm. are now a, a, a price that we have to consider if I want to continue to pay that every single month or every single time that I use this. Right. Mm -hmm. So I look at things of, I want to be irreplaceable and I never want to be a bill. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to communicate here and there. I'm going to make sure that things are on time or before. Right. I'm never going to be a bill to somebody. Right. That even now, and that's me personally. Now, of course, mm. when, it, when we're talking about business, certain things scale, you can't have that personal touch to every single thing. But if you have that mindset when you're starting to create those things, anything from content to your profile to products to services to where I'm never trying to be a bill for anybody. And a bill doesn't only mean money. A bill mm. can also mean time, right? Because- if I'm spending time looking at your stuff, right, it has to still add value to me. If it doesn't add any kind of value, then I'm moving on, right? You're, you're something that's wasting my time. Wasting time, wasting money is two things I never want to be for anybody. So I always look at it if, of I'm going to add extra value. I'm going to give my all because what I never want to do is be a bill for somebody because that's what we don't look forward to. I don't look forward mm. to, to getting that email about that. I owe this. I never like getting uh, a notification when, when Apple hits me on my subscription join, I'm like, oh, mm. man, come on. Like that's never a good feeling. I never want to be that feeling for somebody. So yeah, mm. I never, I never want to be a bill for anybody. Mm. What would you say is um is the most important thing with, with putting out content? Um, because I know a lot of people they get stooped um with just making it sharp as possible, making it so concise, look the best. And I've seen people grow platforms. We've all seen people grow platforms, and it's just like they don't have the best phone, they don't have the best video quality, they might not be as coordinated to have the whole script down but they do well because it does something um, for the, the, the viewer. What, what is that thing that, that people, that people do that helps them like go farther than other people who might be more polished or might have more credentials or. Presence. Mm. It's, it's what I keep saying. Presence. Mm. Um, there are creators, there are pages, there are influencers that may show up once in a while. Right. Mm. And that's cool. And we pay attention to them when they do show up. Mm. But the person who's showing up every single day is getting more of my time than that mm. one person that just pops up here and there. Right. So and I understand because for for some of us, we're perfectionists. Mm. So it has to look look a certain kind of way, it has to give a certain kind of feel, certain kind of tone, if mm. not. I'm not putting it out and that's fine. That should be a certain bucket in mm. your content strategy. Right. Mm. So I'm not saying get rid of that aesthetic, that feel, that vibe, but what are we doing in the meantime mm. to be there for our audience, to bring brand awareness, to, 
to our pages, to nurture our audience and to convert as well. Right. There is there is cycles that our audience comes through. Some are going to just know, like just be introduced to us. So you're telling them I have to wait so many days to even see your stuff again? No. So what is going to to bring them? What's going to keep them? And then what's going to convert them? These are all the things that we have to continuously put out. But that doesn't mean forget about the high high definition quality, forget about the lighting, the sound. The, the, I'm not saying that. But just like how we do a podcast every single week, we don't do that every single day. You feel me? Mm. But consistency doesn't mean every single day. It just means I got to be consistent on the time that I'm going to be there. But with us going in on a podcast once a week, I'm chopping up those clips so I can be present for the rest of the week. Mm. Right. I'm not trying to always give the 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 clips and the and the vibe of of a podcast every single day, but I'm gonna make you feel like it is. It's not mm. exactly what I'm doing in the back end. It's what the presence that I'm giving you in the front end. Mm. And so, yeah, it's it it is important for your look from a branding standpoint, right? But what we can't do is allow that to stop us and stop our brand growth because we're waiting for a specific look or we're budgeting for this particular camera, this particular video editor, that whole nine. What are we doing in the meantime? And if we're looking at what's been working ever since the pandemic, it means, yo, I'm grabbing my phone real quick and I'm connecting with the people. If TikTok is still, and they just did a uh, a study, TikTok is still one of number one downloaded apps and they thrive off of just kids grabbing their mm. phone and being themselves. Mm. Why are we not paying attention to that blueprint and doing it in all our other platforms when everybody's trying to be like TikTok? So. How do you build consistency on TikTok? See, and that's one. I, I haven't really, I don't have a strong presence on TikTok. Um, I actually built a page for the ancestral plane on TikTok, a personal page, but my ancestral plane page, I don't have access to it, but that's cool because nobody else has access to it. So I'm like, all right, well, at least that, at least that's good. Nobody could take the username, but right. um, how do you build that engagement on it? Cause I, I just noticed like, to me personally, it looks like the algorithm is kind of fickle. Like one video do 10 K and then the next video do 3 million. And it's just like, I don't really understand how you find some type of consistency with it. Like, how do you find some sort of consistency with getting okay numbers with TikTok? Or is it like, or maybe does it just look different? Like maybe it doesn't look like 50K every video. It might look like 90K, then 10K. Maybe that's what consistency looks like on TikTok. Maybe my metric is just wrong. So it, TikTok, you have to think about it like any other algorithm, right? Meaning some of our stuff is going to hit, some mm. of our stuff isn't. Right. Um, with TikTok, it's it's weird because what I've noticed with TikTok, they will they are amazing for brand awareness. Right. So you're constantly being shown to different people, mm. even when people follow you, you don't even get seen by the people who follow you. Sometimes mm. you get seen more on this on the for you page now. The thing is, once you figure out what works, continue to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And and the reason why we're seeing uh, some low numbers here and there is because we're not figuring out what people are really searching for, what people mm -hmm. really want from us. And when we do find those numbers of like, yo, people really like this, we go the opposite way. Right. We d get uh, we get influenced by. Okay, what's trending that they get numbers, they get these million numbers, they got a million followers and they eat crabs. That's it. That's all they do. Is it, And I'm actually giving something motivational, educational, like I'm mm. giving something of real value. What is what is happening? Right. 
I, I've realized this with um, with E's page and then even with my page, like one, don't schedule out your stuff. TikTok does not like schedulers. Mm. The second I took out the 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 scheduling from E's page, it, there was a million uh, posts. I was like, what? I got a million views on this one. How? It was mm. like 10 seconds. Right. So um, don't do schedulers Two, for my page. I'm putting out social media updates here and there, but the AI stuff worked right. Went mm. crazy. I made a playlist of all the AI stuff. I know that I'm going to continuously put out AI stuff I'm a, I'm a still do the social media updates here and there, see how it hits. And some of them do hit. Right. But I know the source of things and I'm now paying attention to what's my new average number. Mm. So, and I'm going to focus on raising that average number 1%, mm. right? I'm not here going to think of, okay, I got 300 K plays on this one. That's my new average. And I get discouraged when I don't, when it goes right back down to 500, when mm. it goes right back down to a thousand, right? Mm. I, I can't get discouraged because I know the algorithm, how it hits, it is, I'm going to make you feel special. I don't want you to leave me. I want you to know that TikTok is where it's at here. This, this video is going to do amazing. And you're like, yes, I'm good. I figured it out. And then it drops you back to reality. Mm -hmm. Figure out your average number. Figure out what people want. Figure out a, it does need whatever consistent schedule you want to create. Now, I won't be like other strategists. It's like every single day on TikTok. No, right? Because if you hit sniper on, you know exactly what your audience wants. Boom. Each time that you post four times a week five times a week or whatever, it's going to hit exactly what the people want, right? So it's always in any social media platform, it's always about what exactly does your audience want and stay right there as you're testing out other things, but stay right there because that's proven numbers already. Mm. Are hashtags effective with TikTok? Over there, yeah. Mm. Over in TikTok, yeah. Instagram, absolutely not anymore. Okay, okay, um, yeah, yeah, I noticed yeah, that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Uh, when with Reels, when topics came out, they started mm. to concentrate a little bit more on the topics than hashtags. They've went from all the way from 30 to now like four, right? Mm. Four to five hashtags on Instagram and then topics where uh, TikTok still, you can still get, because it's SEO, Right. Mm. So any type of words, doesn't matter if it's a hashtag or not, any type of words, if if people are searching for it, because at, at one point, TikTok was getting uh, more searches than Google. Mm. It's crazy. Right. So TikTok is is concentrating on on the words that you put into your actual captions. So, yeah, hashtags is still relevant over there. And do you think the um, scheduling post thing on Instagram, is that, does that have an effect too? Like are the scheduling posts on Instagram bad? So I, I don't, I don't think it does as much as it used to, right? Some mm. people said, you know, have different experiences with it. I think it doesn't, but to still have a, like a combo, meaning mm. schedule something out, but do something manual as well. So you can honestly see from your own experience mm. what works. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm always going to give my experience, but I already know my experience may not be your experience. So mm. allow data to tell you scheduling works, scheduling doesn't work. Posting every single day works. Posting every single day doesn't work several times a day does doesn't work. Right. So it, it's more on try, try to combo before just going all in scheduling because your numbers could shift quickly and you may not uh, know how to recover. Mm. Yeah. And I, I noticed that too. Um, 
I would just see different things change with my algorithm. Or I would see um, different things that other people would do that I wouldn't find effective for mine. Then I learned about shadow banning and I, you know, I would go through periods of on my Instagram, especially where um, I would be doing everything how I've always done it, but the numbers just would not be what they used to be. And then I figured out about shadow banning and then somebody taught me about what to do when you're shadow banned. And it's just the more information you have, the more instances and situations you know how to deal with, because it's a, it's a remedy for pretty much everything on social media. I mean, if you're not getting the engagement, it's pretty much an answer for why you're not getting the engagement. Um, yeah. But I, I also heard you on the Ernie Lee podcast talking about a very, um, very, very crucial topic um, subject. You was talking about just the rollout and you were um, yeah. referencing Nipsey Hussle and his rollout with the, with the money machine, the money counter. And yeah. um, I just love the way you broke that down and just like building up the anticipation. Like people don't understand the power of that. Like when I tell people how I like to roll out my podcast episodes, they don't understand it. They be like, man, like I'm like the level of mystique that I want for these episodes is like on another level. But it's just the way I see it, the way you see your product, it has to be like prime time it got to be yes. like like you can't see it like oh we're in the basement with some drinks with some mics talking and shooting and shit like this is prime time this is the greatest podcast of all time like how would yeah. that podcast roll out can you talk about that rollout that nipsey also did for the money counter I, I, oh I love absolutely that. absolutely so um for for those who don't know i'm a huge nipsey fan huge nipsey fan and mm, so me as well. the fact that this man, after his passing, is still putting out products and putting out products that actually people are waiting for is mm. amazing. Right. So when there was talks about, you know, coming out with the with the um, money machine, there was pictures of it and just saying coming soon. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then there was a video like a day later of it. And then giving out the date, right? And then for nostalgic reasons, because nostalgic situations hit, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody's been paying attention. When anybody sees anything nostalgic, it brings them back and like, yo, I need that now, right? So they, mm -hmm. they showed a picture, a tweet of Nipsey talking about the the money machine and saying it's coming soon. So now we're looking mm -hmm. at it like it, it hits to the core yeah. followers like, yo, I remember or he talked. Oh, it's coming to life right now. It it it, it triggers an emotion, right? Because if you really support Nip, you're going to want to see this through. Right. Mm. So now they hit you with the the curiosity of like, when is it coming? Now they tell you it's coming. They show you a sneak peek. Then they mm. hit you with the emotion then boom, they say uh, limited edition, meaning they mm. only have a certain amount. So now that brings up FOMO. I don't want to miss out. Right. So they're doing multiple tactics to get you to to want to purchase this particular money sheen. And like even in the 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 price that it was, because I believe it was three thousand dollars, it sold out. Mm. And this man is has passed, right? It it's cra actually when this is being recorded. The next day uh, is his four year anniversary, right? Mm. And still, till this day, he's doing limited drops. He did the uh, proud to pay uh, vinyls, right? His team did that. His team is doing a second store. So, mm. I really pay attention to the Nipsey brand, even till today, because how they're rolling out off of the spirit is not even off of the influence anymore. It's off of the spirit of this man and what his vision was before and how it's being carried out. We look at it as more of how do we apply that for our own stuff or our own brand? So now I'm thinking about what's going to build the curiosity, what's going to give them the sneak peek, what's going to trigger a certain emotion that they want to be part of the movement or they want to see this through, right? Who are, they did uh, influencers, right? So they gave the machine to certain people 
to get mm. the content from them. So now before the release, they're seeing their mm. some of their favorite people or people who are who highly attached to the brand have these things. So now they see it's physical. It's possible. It's not, this is not a pre-order situation. And so now when it dropped, boom, people are going that we got high visit rate because now we're seeing, okay, how do I get it? When is it? How, how much is it? Boom. And, and, and that's it. So that's why like that particular launch and there's, there's multiple launches from, from how they do things that is amazing, but how they did that launch for such a high ticket item is amazing. And it was genius because when you broke it down, you said study movie trailers and how they do their role, how to know how movie directors and, and how they roll out the movie studios. I was like, that's so genius because I was thinking about um, rolling out the merch for our podcast. And I'm like, how do how do we do this? Like, how do we do it in, in a way that gets people engaged? And when you broke it down like that, like roll it out like a movie studio, I was like, that is absolutely genius. I had never considered that concept. And it's just like, you know, you can study how other people like the greats study. I never thought about it like that. When he was like, give it to people early. And then these tastemakers have it like it had never occurred to me when you're seeing these article, um, like the, the critical claim, uh, um, yeah. like comments on the movie and stuff like that. That's to build the anticipation. I had never considered that at all. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing that you had said, which was really powerful. Um, you said, if you want to do podcasting. And you're not willing to put in seven to 10 years, quit now. And okay. I was like, damn, like break that, break that, break that whole, break that whole thing down. Cause I know a lot of people's trying to get into podcasts and, and they get discouraged when, when they're not able to get certain traction and different things break that. And you said that's kind of pretty much with most things, you know, um, mm -hmm. but you were speaking on podcasting specifically. Yeah. So podcasting, especially in the beginning is a hard road, meaning mm. we we look at the wallows and, and gillies yeah. of like first episode on the charts and, and yeah. going out and now have deals. Um, we look at an earn your leisure that after a year blew up. Right. Mm. But we have to believe and we have to remember there are millions of podcasts, mm. millions. And there are a 100 on the charts. And then a hundred on, you know, specific categories. Mm. We have to remember from discoverability, it's, it's a hard road. From a monetizing situation, it's a hard road, right? Mm. So if we don't instantly come in, okay, first year, I'm a, and, and not saying that still can't be the goal, mm. but with podcasting, if we look at a Joe Rogan, a Joe Budden, we look at uh, the Ringer Network and, and that whole nine, their, their success really started six, seven years. Mm. So it's, it's a pattern. I'm, I'm, I go off patterns. So the greats, the one percenters of podcasting, now, some have had platforms before, and so hence mm -hmm. why some of these are working. So we we can't look at that and be like, look at Nori. Look at this. Nori was a rapper, mm -hmm. right? Like platinum. Yeah, Great. I see platinum, yeah. Right. We can't. We, we look at Joe. We look at Joe Budden. And even though his podcast took a minute because he was one of the beginning of podcasting, right? Joe had a platform and an audience in, in itself, right? Mm. If we are starting a podcast with no influence or small influence, we can't expect the same traction. We have to be in it for saying, yo, if I can't do this for seven years, six, seven years, this is not for me. Mm. This is not for me, right? Now, if you want to be strategic build your influence up and then go, okay, let me do this podcast. You could cut it to maybe three years. Mm -hmm. That's it. Three years. Right. But it, it podcasting is more of a long game because if you think about it, it's audio first. Mm -hmm. 
audio is hard to find. Hard to find, right? Video is highly competitive. So we have to come with the mindset of I'm doing this to build authority, to repurpose this content, to leverage the, this platform for my own. So not necessarily think of podcasts from I'm always going to get sponsors and everything. And that does come. Not mm-hmm. saying it doesn't. It does come. But I should be able to sell my own stuff on my podcast before somebody else sponsors me. Mm-hmm. I should be able to get new clients, new opportunities based off the podcast I have because I'm using I'm utilizing this content and repurposing it on other on other platforms to build my authority. Right. I'm I'm not looking at it from the commercial side of podcasting. I'm looking at it as more of an internal tool for my brand and a and of and a side of, of of a published content, right, that is now global. Mm-hmm. Right. Now that it's hitting uh Japan, Australia, Trinidad, Dominican Republic, like Spain, like all these different things. Now I'm global based off that, based off the consistency once a week, right? Mm. Based off taking that hour podcast and then chopping it up seven different ways, right? Basing it off, making sure the long form is on YouTube, then chopping up to bite-sized ones on YouTube as well for those people who don't have the attention span of of an hour to give them maybe seven minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, and, and those are like, it takes a lot of work. Hence why I said for you to find a true rhythm, Mm -hmm. right. It's going to take time. It's, it's not as simple, even though as podcasters and those people who teach about it, you want to deem it as, as simple. So people can start. So yeah, Mm -hmm. just camera, mic, press record. But honestly, like our our podcast cost over a thousand dollars a month to maintain. Mm. Mm. You, you feel me? Like it it it's the the hosting fees catches on, the editing catches on from an audio side to a video side, right? Mm. Um, what it, it, thumbnails, any mm. of these other little small services, vidIQ to make sure your 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 YouTube is running right. Like mm. all these different tools add up. Hence, like this isn't for the week. Mm. It it takes time, it takes money, right? And it takes patience. And if you have all that, absolutely. Go ahead, right? But if you don't, just Work on what you have from a social media presence side. Work what you have from a uh, in-person networking and events side, right? Those things work. work. Make a book, right? Write a book. Do, do those things. But podcasting definitely takes some energy. And so that's why I say between six to seven Maybe even 10 years. If you're not thinking mm-hmm. about doing podcasting that long, sit down. Mm-hmm. That's real. Because um, when I f- did the first year, I thought we was going to be doing 100,000. We was going to get signed the first year. And um, it, you really learn um, that just with taking your time and you putting your your hours into the space, like people... It's a beautiful feeling. Like I think the most beautiful thing to hear, like when 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 I would have people reach out to me about you know how they found the podcast, and they'd be like, "My friend referenced the podcast, or I heard a podcast um, while I was driving in the car with my friend." Or this, I'm like, "Dang, I thought you just saw me on social media." Like it becomes organic. When it becomes yes. organic, like you find the appreciation in it. Like wow, like I remember mm-hmm. I found this rapper. I know this is crazy. I I had flew out to Atlanta in, in last summer. And I heard this rapper, he's not even big, but I just heard the Uber driver playing him. And I found him on Instagram. He only got like a couple hundred followers. I'm like, I thought this dude was like platinum, like the way he's right. not like he just. And I was thinking like, dang, that's how people come across my stuff. Like they like I'm we not the biggest or anything, but the fact that people can come across uh, somebody will tell you about that. Like, that's beautiful, man. And mm-hmm. 
it's like when when you do a Zoom, like we do like um, Unity Fast. So for our podcast, we'll do Unity Fast with the listeners. So once a month, we'll do a three day juice fast, and then we'll do a Zoom at the end, and and then we, you get 60, 70 people in the Zoom, and it's beautiful because it's like you're building a community, and it's kind of, it's like what you said throughout the whole thing. You got to give some sort of value. You got to you mm-hmm. got to constantly be present. Like that's what's going to build your podcast up. Like some big podcasts, a big influence, maybe they don't have to do that. And it's, for me, it's not even about having to do it. It's just like, I really love serving my podcast community. Like I'm really there to provide, like we're a mental health podcast. This is not this, but my other podcast, we're a mental health podcast. So it's just like, I'm really intentional about that. I'm intentional about the book club. I'm intentional about sitting down and having these conversations with the community. And, and when you build that, like, you might not have hundreds of thousands of listeners, but if you put an event together, people are going to show up because they love you in a real way. When you drop merch, people are going to buy it because they love you in a real way. If you need something that needed support, if you drop a new episode, people is going to support it because they love you in a real way. Like those loyal fans beat like clickbait fans any day. And that can only be built by time. Like you can Mm -hmm. have a podcast with a hot episode or you can have a big guest or you can have a topic that gets put on spiritual word or the the shade room because you got somebody talking crazy on there. But what builds that consistency, what builds that longevity, that legacy is that consistent time, that consistent presence. Like you was talking. I also want to ask you just real quick before we go. SMS marketing and and then the email marketing, which do you think is more efficient um, or it does each have their own lane? Um, I asked because I was using community.com for my podcast and then it. they increased the subscription base and crazy amount of money. And then I I'm not a big baller. I'm like, all right, well, I. I don't know anybody born like I'm like, yo, that was crazy that the subscription yeah. increase. And I was just like, I'm not using. Is there another platform? Yet? I wouldn't actually after that. Is there another platform that's that's good for that sort of thing? Because I'm still looking for one because that I'm, was I'm so effective at, for me. Yeah, no. So I'm looking at Superphone. So Ryan Leslie. Let me write that down. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ryan Leslie is the founder of that. And mm. uh, actually, Nipsey used that, used mm. it, his software. And so hence why I'm like, all right, we may have to we may have to go into that. So I'm 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 really looking into that as well as they allow you to invest in the in the platform, too. So not mm. only do you become a, you know, a client and, and, and use the services, but you can also invest in the platform for when uh, it does get acquired and things like that. So I, yeah. I, I am looking heavy into that um, and being intentional with how are we going to monetize on that, right? Because Mm -hmm. what I did wrong with community was I led with value. And so when they increased the prices, I was like, I'm not even getting paid Mm -hmm. from this, right? Um, Because I saw how many people were doing text messaging wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Where it was just the only time you text me was to, to buy something, Right. Mm-hmm. You didn't add no any kind of value. So now exactly. that I went value heavy first and I've experienced the uh, the buy, buy, buy. On the other hand, what is going to be a happy medium that because people trust you with their phone number. This is a direct communication. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have to be a bit strategic to where they don't regret giving you their their number right because they only have one number this is not like email this is not like i could give you and and like i could delete it or not read it after a while like it's it's a it's a straight direct communication so i am looking into that again because just like you i was in community Mm -hmm. huge huge growth in in that and then they raised it to stupid prices that just didn't make any kind of sense Community, you trash for that. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Um, but now I'm going to look into to Ryan Leslie thing from an email standpoint. Way cheaper. OK, mm-hmm. <laughs> super cheaper. Um, and there are people who still do read their emails. Right. Mm-hmm. There's still people who look forward to seeing your name, seeing the topics that you you give up. Right. I, it, it's like how I look at social media, if there's an audience there, regardless of how big or small it is, I'm going to take advantage because 
that person that that person may purchase. It may not have a grand open rate because I believe open rates now are like 20 percent or something like that Mm. Um, may not have a grand open rate. But that person who does, they're they're invested. They want to know more. They want to purchase. They want to be a part of the brand some way, shape or form. So regardless, I don't ever say do one or the other. I either say do both, but bare minimum email. Mm. And and um, I would agree uh, the same. Um, I think for me, just to lose all those um, subscribers on community just really just made me like, man, I should have just did email marketing from the beginning. Like, how could you just and then you have to pay to get the information like yeah. like you have to resubscribe to their platform to get your 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 community's numbers like I can't I mean I could always reach back out and try to get everybody's individual ind- individual number but it's just like the fact that they wouldn't just give that information over and um I just felt like that was criminal you know I I remember when I got one of my Facebook pages deleted um they per- they give you all your information they give you your text the history of your text the t- history of your photos they give you all your information I'm like why couldn't they just give me my information but they leverage it like yeah yep. if you're not gonna resubscribe we're not gonna and I'm just like, dang, you know, I've I've lost platforms. I've I've had platforms be deleted. I've had all types of stuff happen. And it just wasn't a good feeling. And I'm like, they got to be another level of marketing. But I guess it's it's pros and cons to each. Real quick, I know this just came to my mind. Is there mm. any way to be effective with YouTube shorts? Like, is there any like trick mm. to YouTube shorts? So YouTube shorts are very effective. So think of it like more like they are the appetizers. Uh, and your long form videos are the main course, mm-hmm. right? So you always want to take the title serious, right? Make sure there's keywords that people are searching for. Um, I I have a I realized I did two things. I did it without the description and tags, and I did it with the description with tags. I'm getting more results right now when I put the descriptions and tags. Mm. Right. Because it's it's more words for people to search for. Right. So if you're looking up uh, since we've been talking about him, if you're looking up Nipsey Hussle, I'm putting Nipsey in the title. I'm putting Nipsey in the description. I'm doing Mm. hashtags on on Nipsey and I'm putting the key words. And so it 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 hits. And then uh, what I also seen is effective is remixing your own videos. Right. So when you have your video, hit that remix and cut up like just like how you would do a regular short. If you were editing it on the side, find mm. that particular part inside the video, because when people click on it, it directs them right back to the long form. Mm. Right. So YouTube shorts right now are actually what I'm finding the way to get more subscribers. And the long form is the way you keep them. Mm. I love that. I love that because I, I haven't really got into shorts, but I heard they're very effective. And I just wanted some quick game on that because I'm like, that's one thing I, I'm like, I don't have much knowledge or information on that. So I, I, I really appreciate you just sitting down with us for a few moments and just sharing the wisdom. I know this has been like a wealth of knowledge. This has been a master class. Um, of students, because I know you say you're still stu- studying and different things, but Absolutely. this has been a, a master class for us, you know, because we're still learning and growing. And I really appreciate you just sitting, having a, a few moments to sit down with us. This has been a blessing. And make sure y'all tune in on the next episode. This is One on One with Ahmad the Poet. This is Nikki Saunders, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.